In the second part of the study, uh, we um, wanted to look at the mechanisms um, that uh, uh, subserve this, um, the, the relationship between blast and injury to the brain. Um, there's been quite a bit of research done in this area. We kind of started this in, an, in another fashion. Um, we modeled our, uh, our, our experimental blast on what we see, what our military service men and women see in the field. Um, we modeled this actually on a 120 millimeter artillery round IED, which is a common uh, artillery, uh, a common um, uh, IED that was encountered in, in, in Iraq. Packs a punch about 5.8 kilograms of TNT at five meters, um, so it's not a firecracker. This is a very serious um, uh, uh, weapon and has done a lot of damage to a lot of people. A lot of our service people live now because their lungs are protected. Uh, they wear um, Kevlar vest, and that is actually um, uh, permitted a lot of these folks who are exposed, our service people um, who have been exposed to these type of weapons uh, to actually survive. So we um, uh, built an experimental blast and uh, that modeled that um, and importantly um, we protected the chest and allowed the, the head uh, to be able to move in the setting just like our military service people. When we did this, um, to our surprise, uh, we found that in these really ordinary laboratory mice, that after a single exposure, um, these same mice started to develop the same neuropathology that we see in humans. We were actually shocked to see this. So we were expecting um, uh, to, be, to only be able to do this in, uh, in special mice, uh, but uh, lo and behold, we actually saw pretty much the same pathology that I just described to you, early CTE, in these mice after two weeks, after exposure to a single blast, and um, uh, with really uh, uh, very little differences from what we see in, in people. Not only did we see the pathology, uh, but we also saw the, the tau accumulation. We saw the microvasculopathy that I just described. Um, we also saw the damage to the axons. But we saw changes in the physiology of the brain. The electrical um, properties of the brain changed. The nerve conduction um, the, uh, was slowed down tremendously. And the ability to learn and to remember were also severely impaired. Um, and even the electrical connections between neurons that enable them to talk and, um, so that we can learn and remember were um, uh, seriously impaired I, and chronically impaired. We were not expecting that. Um, it also appeared to us, uh, our results suggest that these injuries do not resolve and in fact, um, at least in the time period of the study that we uh, conducted the study, um, they appear possibly to progress and possibly get worse. So that was quite alarming to us. Uh, we don't know yet whether that will uh, continue to be the fact or whether we, uh, uh, these injuries will ultimately resolve over months or years, uh, but it did raise our concern that after a single blast, uh, that there could be chronic uh, damage um, that uh, potentially progressed. Now, we asked the question, what is it that causes the injury? Um, and it turned out that, uh, quite differently than we expected, we, we thought it would be the blast wave going through the brain. And when we measured this, sure enough, the blast wave does go through the brain. Uh, it does so in microseconds, and it does so with very little damage. What's behind the shock wave is a blast wind. And the blast wind is, even for a modest, uh, a modest uh, uh, explosive device like this, um, can whip around to 300, 350 miles an hour, and it goes back and forth. If you think about putting your hand out of a car going 80 miles an hour down the highway, um, and you stick your hand out, it, you're going to have uh, quite a pushback on your, on, your, on your hand as you stick your arm out. And you bring that up to 350 miles an hour, and you oscillate that back and forth over a period of milliseconds, you will unlikely have an arm uh, uh, attached to your body. And that's pretty much what we saw here. We call this the bobble head effect um, because the head really does bobble on, uh, on the neck uh, in this setting, and that's what causes the damage. In fact, when we had, uh, held the head still, we did not see the long-term um, neurobehavioral deficits that we saw when the head swung. So that gives us tremendous confidence that we're on to the right mechanism. And importantly, that gives us tremendous optimism that we can now intervene.